Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here on Monday. So we have uh, a book nook, a um, quotes from the vault, and a little extra thing that you may need to know someday. So first let's do the book nook. On my tantalizing table toppers, which is the book that'll come out in May, and you can pre-order it, link is below, and at my website, my publisher Martingale has put out a little video showing all the things in the book. So that is linked in the description box and at my website today. You can just watch it right at the article. But I wanted to show you uh, one of the quotes in here because if you remember um, back in 2021, I think, or 2020, I don't remember when it was that I was making these quilts. Anyways, when I was doing these quilts, there was a quilt that got lost. The It was a top, and it just didn't, it was said it was delivered uh, to the spa, but it wasn't to be found. And eventually, we just had to write it off, and I had to remake the top and resend it. And it was getting a little tight for the deadline, but you know, it all worked out. This is the quilt. This is the one that I had to redo. Luckily, with the table toppers and table runners, they're not a really big size project. And so I got to remake this one. Lucky me. <laughs> so that is the one that got remade. I thought I would just share that with you. Also, before we go on, I got the next, the next section from the kit done of words to live by. So here is the, the section I've got done. Everyone belongs and the rainbow. This is the first section. So I got that one done. And here is the kit. There's still a few kits. And if you buy the fat quarter bundle, you can buy the fat quarter bundle plus the pattern. And if the fat quarter bundle has the, the panel with all the sayings, these saying panels here. So you, you will get it if you buy the fat quarter bundle. Uh, but you could, there's still a couple kits left. So if you, this has been speaking to you, you want to get it because it's not particularly new. So I don't know how readily available things like this are after a while. Okay, the next thing is one of our friends wrote to me and said, do you have a list of solid colors that can be used for skin tones, all different skin tones, light to dark, uh, because she's doing a project and she needs to have different skin tones. Uh, and I thought, you know what? I have a feeling my friend Christopher Thomas that works for Riley Blake, he is the director of marketing over there now and he's a designer, a fantastic designer. He does the Blossom fabric and all kinds of different fabric lines. Um, but I thought, I bet Christopher knows because I think they did something uh, like that at one point, put together a collection of skin tone fabrics. And so I wrote him and he's like, yes. And so I have now, here's a graphic that he sent me. So there's a bunch of different colors that you can use that are nice for skin tones. It shows a whole variety of them. And I have a little PDF. I put that into a little PDF and it lists all the numbers so that you can print it off. Uh, and that is down at my website. So you want to link over there today. All right, let's look at some quilts from the vault. <laughs> I have a little quilts from the vault for you <laughs> segment here. This is Saturday, I'm taping it. And I got up today and I thought, you know, I don't have a regular video to tape. So what kind of thing can I work on a project? And I really need to be doing some of the stuff with the quilts that my, you know, stored quilts and with the documentation and things like that. But that really does feel like work, but it's got to be done. So I thought, okay, well, let me just do a, another group of them. And while I was in there, I thought, you know, I need to organize some of these a little differently because I have a group of quilts that are, uh, will go to charity uh, to be used, but they, they're ones that need to be used for somebody to raffle off, uh, that kind of a thing. Not the ones that can be going to, you know, the, the kids or the homeless shelter, you know, those kind. So I have a group of those and I'm working with one um, person, um, my friend Susan locally, and then I have somebody else that I'm uh, contacted about some of them. So they're sort of in a wait status and I thought I need to get them, and, and they may wait there a little while. So I thought I need to get them uh, on a different spot so that they just can wait there a while because I might have to deliver some of them and it's sort of an ongoing process. So I decided, okay, well, let me just clear a shelf, put those in that shelf, and then in the meantime, get the ones that I can give to Susan next so that they can go off for whatever, you know, functions they need and she has going on. And then I'll get 
another grouping. <laughs> so I have about 15, maybe not quite 15, 12, and there's one up on the wall. And I thought I'll just go ahead and show all these to you, then I will photograph them. I will go put them in my gallery and then sort these. Some of them will go in the special event. I'm going to call them like special event quilts because that's what they really are. They're just, you know, a little bit nicer quilt. They're not, you know, or really nice quilts that, you know, they just need to be used for a different purpose. So I will put the special event ones, you know, in that pile and the other ones getting ready for Susan to pick them up and, and maybe, maybe even next week. I don't know. I have to get some other stuff organized for her. So uh, we'll see. So on the wall, we'll kick off with that one. And this is from the Perfect Five book, which is the sister book of the Perfect Ten, which is using charm packs. It's a book by the Fat Quarter Shop. I just want to show you the backing on there. Isn't that neat? This was from the fabric line. This was a um, Ruby Society fabric line, Ruby Society charm pack, and I used their back, their fabric for the backing. It's got horses and there's an owl. Um, and I like the quilting on this one. It's uh, sort of a modified Baptist fan. And so that one will just stay up there for us to look at and, uh, and enjoy while I show you the other things. These are all random. If I have links to where they are, I'll put them in the description box in the, under the video here. Okay, this one is a table runner and it was on the cover of one of my older books. Um, it was also in a magazine, so it's Quilt the Season Book 2, and this is actually on the cover of it. It's a super effective way to use a stripe. So basically, it's a stripe uh, with their half square triangles, but the stripe just makes it awesome. These fabrics were one of my much, much older fabric lines from way long time ago. <laughs> So I'll tell you a little bit about each one as I go along. Oh, here's the back. I'll try to remember to show you the back. It's all just one fabric, so this chocolate brown fabric. So next is a piece that I am not sure what this was for. There's no tag on it. So it is like a little crazy quilt kind of thing. I think it was, um, might have been one of my teaching quilts. I may have used it for a class where we were doing these crooked log cabins it was called so you're basically twisting and turning the fabrics and I think this was an example of one where I used the same fabric in all the centers and then you know lots of scraps for the sashings and the border and it was showing all of that here is the back of it so I think this will make a cute baby quilt don't you think I think it'd be pretty sweet and it's all done and quilted in bubbles. So I quilted this one with these sort of big bubbles all over the place. All right, the next one was another one from a while back with one of my fabric lines. Uh, so this is one of my fabric lines. I love the blue. It was it's Brambleberry Farm fabric. Uh, I quilted this one too. The back is a Brambleberry Farm. So it is an oak leaf variation. I believe this one was also done for some classes because I had, this is like my little bluebird. It's basically a little bluebird, but there's no bird on it. So it's done with this, the same pattern. Yeah, now I'm remembering. <laughs> it's just, I haven't actually used this one. I taught that class forever because it was my applique class. And, uh, but for somewhere, somehow along the way, this didn't stay with the the class because I'm realizing it got moved, probably put on a shelf at some point and uh, it didn't it didn't stay with the class so uh, now I need to go put this I'm gonna put it on the special pile the further pile over there because it needs to go with the class okay, this this little one here was part of my beginner book so this is one of the quilts in my beginner book and it's one to um, just learn how to do the stars it's got super easy you know there's the back, just a brown background, but it's done. So it's one of the teaching tools for that, for that book. And I think it also would make a very cute baby quilt or a table topper. So, oh, that doesn't go in that pile. Okay. <laughs> this, so many things. Now I have used this uh, house block many, 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 many times with this layout, Done, doing it in lots and lots of variations. So this is another one uh, of it. It's been in magazines, it's been single patterns. 
uh, never in a book, but this, this was done with one of my Moda fabric lines from a few years ago, and there's the back. So I've got a strip on the back. They're fun. House blocks are fun. Uh, they're kind of fun and repeat like that. I don't usually do them like that, but uh, it was fun to just, you know, sort of repeat the same fabrics, the same block. So here it is, the same block with the sashing part just once and in the outside. So it could be a banner that you could put by a door or in a small place in your home. And this was done with the batiks. So when I would do a trade show, which is one of the primary things I ever vended at as a as a pattern business, um, I would need to show like this was the pattern, but I showed it in the cottons, which was this, um, and then the batik, and it was nice to just have a smaller piece that I could hang in a little spot. I didn't need a full quilt to be in the booth, and so that's basically why that came about. Okay, the next one's a little bigger. It's got some big, big flowers and a saying on it. I believe, let me just check, but I believe I did this, oh, it doesn't say, but I believe I did it for a magazine and then it may have gone into one of my leisure arts books. So there's a friendship quilt, friends forever. So the um, back, this, these, uh, this fabric here, the, whoops, I'm standing on stuff, the plaid, see this plaid here? This is a woven, so it was, you know, double-sided, it was a woven. It was way back, for those of you who remember Dan River fabric, that was a Dan River fabric. And then on the back, I had one of my fabric lines from one of my P&B fabric lines years ago. That's what a lot of the front fabric is too, is the P&B for the flowers. It's kind of neat to see this plaid, um, you know, I have it, you know, Dan River went out of business many, many years ago. They were actually um, had factories down here in Southern Virginia in Dan River. So that's where they're, but the people that I worked with were all in New York City. So their offices were in New York City, but uh, their manufacturing was down, down Southern Virginia. Okay. This here is in one of my books. Did I write what book? New, oh, the triangle book. Okay, my triangle book, which is out of print, but you can get a digital copy. But this is, you know, for triangles, different ways to use triangles. And what I love about this quilt, besides the fact that it's just really a fun quilt to make, uh, I used a lot of different, these were my batiks, and I they were all in the same sort of tone. Let me show you what I did on the back. I did, like I had an extra, an extra goose. And you can see there all the fabrics. I just made this strip with the extra gooses, geese, <laughs> gooses. So Cindy and Dennis quilted this one. Look at the quilting. Can I get, let me just see. Yeah, I think you can see it. Look at that quilting. They did the, these just phenomenal, phenomenal job with my quilts. Um, I just, uh, I treasure all of those. So I can't decide if I'm keeping this one or not. This one I've put in the pile to, to go and taken it off so many times. It will eventually go because I don't really, I can't keep, <laughs> I can't even, I don't even need 300 quilts, <laughs> but you know, it's a process and I have to, I get rid of all the easier ones first. And then, you know, one like that, I probably will take it off again. I think one of the things is I love the quilting that they did on it. I love, I love, love, love that. It is so effective. And then also I think to myself, well, we could do a quilt like this as a sew along with great, you know, cause it's a lot like, uh, it's just half square triangles. And so half square triangles can be made into so many different things, such as like I just did with the, um, these crumb blocks, which isn't quite, it's not finished, but the center part is, I need to put the borders on. But this again, is just half square triangles. And when you, play around with half. So when you have a bunch of them, you can play around with a lot of different designs. And so that's why I think I keep looking at that one going, oh, maybe I just need to hang on to it a little bit longer. <laughs> just a little bit longer. <laughs> oh. Okay, a couple more for this uh, trunks for quilts from the vault. This one was to showcase my um, bobbins and bits fabric 
Stargazer was a pattern I did then for that fabric line. Let me just show you one of the things I did. Whoops, I wanna hit the mic. Um, here we go. <laughs> Here's on my label. See, I used the edge, the selvage off of the uh, edge of the fabric to put on the edge of the label because I wanted to remember what fabric line it was. So I thought that was really fun. This is a repeat block. Uh, here we go. So I think it's a fun one to do. You know, someday maybe I'll republish that pattern, but it is not available at the moment. It's on my list of many, many things to publish again. But it's always great when you have like a repeat, a repeat block like this to take like a fat quarter bundle and then you can just play around with the different blocks. The backing is a bunch of different fabrics. I think, uh, yeah, so the bottom, yes, yeah, so the orange on the bottom. Okay, the next one was for, what was it, a collaboration book. You know, I get invited to submit a design for a book with other people, and so usually by Martingale, and we all put a book in I mean, I put a quilt in the book. Mine's called Heading West. I can't remember what the title of the book is, but I will look for it and write it on the label and then put it down in the comments. So here it is, Heading West. So it's a bunch of half square triangles and then put into a bigger half square triangle. Um, once again, Cindy did just amazing quilting. So I don't know if you can see it, but up close, I mean, there's like on the gray, well, I don't know if you can see it or not, but, and then on the border, she did these great big circles. I don't know if you can see that maybe. The back is just a bunch of the gray fabrics. Let's see, two more in this quilts from the vault. This is a little set I did for a magazine. It was a table runner. There we go, a little table runner. Whoops, come on. Here it is with the patchwork background and then a little vine on it, uh, then some placemats with the same, with a little flower in the corner. So, these, these I think feel dated, <laughs> just to be honest, you know, they just feel dated. But I do have one of my, one most wonderful labels in the world on here. So there is a label that uh, I bet was really fancy for a table runner, like why? I don't know. Okay, the last one's a special one that I will be <clears throat> eventually gifting out somewhere. It'll go in the, um, you know, special quilt. what I call that? what I say in the beginning that pile will be called? <laughs> I can't remember, but the more special quilts. This is the first antique quilt that I bought. I bought some quilt tops prior, but this was the first, and I haven't bought hardly any full antique quilts. Almost all were just uh, tops. So this was the one I bought it at Sully Plantation, uh, and I'm not sure how old it really is. I think the blocks are older. It's possible somebody said it later and then quilted it. It is hand quilted. It just has muslin on the back, uh, but it's just, it's soft. Uh, so it's been washed a bit. Uh, there you can see <clears throat> some of the hand quilting. Got some basic hand quilting. It's got a bit of a poofy batting in it. So I don't know, it might be a poly batting because it's, it's a bit poofy. And then somebody, uh, whoever finished it, took the backing and pulled it to the front for the binding. So that is, that is what's going on with this one. All right, my friend. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the quilts from the vault. Now I have to go through all of these, put each one up here. I take a photograph of the front, the back uh, with the label, if it has a label, which most of these did. Uh, and then I go ahead and load it to my gallery. Then I will put these in one of the two piles for uh, where they will go, where their new life will be someday. <laughs> so I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I'll see you online.